In this lecture, let's talk about some other remaining tidbits about the completable feature interface. We have covered most of the important methods. In all of the slides, we use the method exceptionally to recover from exceptions. But there are other methods which can also handle exceptions. When complete and handle. On the screen is shown an example of the usage of when complete. This is the same example which we used for the all off method, although I made it less verbose for space reasons. You can see where the when complete method is used. If the previous stage was successful or not, this stage will always be triggered. If successful, the throwable variable passed will be null. In our code, we simply check the throwable variable. If it is null, then you just print all of the future responses. If it's not, then you just handle the errors. Instead of when complete, we can also use the handle method as well. You can take a look at the Java docs to see their usage. It's fairly straightforward. We can also use timeouts in our pipeline. A general rule of thumb is to use a decent timeout so that pipelines will fail with a timeout exception in case tasks take too much time. In the example on the screen, if the task does not complete within one second, the completable future will complete exceptionally with a timed out exception. Now with this entire section, what I hope to convey to you was that in order to move towards a more scalable application, we have to use a different kind of programming called reactive style programming. But reactive style programming is not always intuitive. And you could see that from the many examples that we have shown, it takes some time to understand what is going on. As developers, we are not used to this style of programming. Completable features is one way in Java to do reactive style programming. But there are others, Project Reactor or Rx Java are two libraries that we can use. What we want to do with reactive style programming is to use the platform thread only for CPU intensive work and then immediately release it during IO operation. This requires careful thought by the developers to make sure that we do not, by mistake, introduce blocking code in the middle. After all, nothing in the completable future methods actually stop us from doing IO work as part of the async tasks. In fact, in all of our examples, we were actually doing IO, sleep. But that was only for convenience, to showcase the concepts. If you think about this diagrammatically, in the ideal scenario, we want to move from blocking style to non-blocking style development. On the screen, you see a synchronous style of development where a user request thread is first fetching data from the database, then fetching data from web service, and then returning the final result to the user. We see the thread going from top to bottom. Green represents CPU operations, and red represents the IO operation. You can see that during red, the thread actually blocks. That's bad. The goal of reactive frameworks is to move to this model. As you can see, on the right, the threads are used only for CPU operations. During the IO operations, no platform threads are used. This improves the scalability of the application considerably. And that's really the main intent of the reactive style development. But this comes at a big cost complexity of the code, as well as reduced developer productivity. Reactive code is harder to understand, harder to debug, and harder to imagine and code. Also, in error situations, tasks can keep running unnecessarily because asynchronous tasks are never explicitly canceled. Reactive frameworks do have their place in the developer ecosystem of popular patterns that can be used. But we should recognize the limitations of this model. Fortunately, with Java 21, 
developers have another way to achieve this goal of scalability by using virtual threads. With virtual threads, along with structured concurrency and scoped values, developers have the potential to snatch back the original style of development, the imperative style. That really is the basis for this entire course.